Hey guys, so in this video I want to do an in-depth guide on the current shotguns in Fortnite. Right now, since there are currently only two in the game, I've been asked by a ton of you guys which is better and which you should use. What's interesting about this new dilemma of whether you should use the combat shotgun or the tack shotgun is that most people seem pretty evenly split on it. Some people swear by the combat shotgun and think it's overpowered, and other people think it's terrible and that the tack is the way to go. Hopefully by the end of this video, I can help you guys learn more about the strengths and weaknesses of each weapon, and then you can decide which you prefer given the situation you're in and your playstyle. So let's start off with talking about how the current meta came to be, and then we'll dive into the pros and cons of the combat shotgun, the pros and cons of the tack, and then wrap up the video with what I recommend. I'll put some timestamps on the screen now, so feel free to skip around, but I definitely think watching the whole video through will be more helpful. So, in patch 9.0, which is just the technical term for the start of Season 9, Epic did the unthinkable and vaulted the pump shotgun. Right before Season 9, the pump was easily the best shotgun in the game. The pump and the tack were the only two shotguns in the game at that point, just like the combat and the tack are the only two shotguns in the game now. In the past, there was the heavy shotgun, which has actually been rumored to come back at some point this season, and then there was the double barrel shotgun, which was incredibly strong, especially from up close. Just as season 9 hit though, we only had the pump and the tack. The pump had green, blue, purple, and gold variants, and a total magazine size of 5. Every time it would fire, there would be a total of 10 pellets that were shot out within the spread, and that's how the damage for it was calculated. The pump was amazing from up close and was capable of doing more than 200 damage with a headshot which would effectively one shot anyone. Now I'm not going to rant or talk about why they took it out, I'm actually going to save that for a future video, but what I will say is that obviously to epic it was too strong so they vaulted it. In place of the pump they added the combat shotgun. The thing is, the combat shotgun is completely different from the pump. First off, the combat is semi-automatic like the TAC, so it's not single fire like the pump was. It holds 10 shells instead of 5, and it shoots 9 pellets instead of 10. Its base damage is 73 for the blue rarity of the combat, 77 for the purple rarity, and then 81 for the gold rarity, and it has a 1.70 headshot multiplier. This means if you hit someone with all 9 pellets to the head, you'll do a maximum damage of 137. So while the pump could one-shot people and do more than 200 damage with the juicy headshot, the combat combat can do only up to 137. Lastly, it has a very tight spread, that means that the pellets fire out in a small cone, so you have to be extremely accurate to do damage. It's pretty evident that the combat and the pump are nothing alike, but how does it stack up against Fortnite's only other shotgun, the tactical shotgun? Now we can actually talk about the pros and cons of the combat shotgun and how to effectively use it. The first thing the combat shotgun does well is damage from range. The combat can do damage up to 10 tiles away, so think of a guy standing 10 floor pieces away from you, it can hit people all the way over there. The reason it has this crazy good range is because of how small and tight its spread is. So while the tack has a big spread, like most shotguns and other games do, combat shotgun spread is small, which means all the pellets will stay closer together and can do more damage from range. With attack, you do like 2 damage if any at all from a 10 tile range, but with the combat shotgun you can consistently do around 30. That's the main strength of the combat and what you need to play around. In fights, you want to try to stay at least a tile or two away from your opponent. Don't try and W key your way into their box or jump right in their face like you would last season with a pump. What I've been doing with the combat shotgun that's been helping me out a ton is ADSing my shots because the spread isn't that much smaller when you ADS. So the more accurate you can be, the better obviously. Plus, it helps to stay within the combat's effective distance range. If you're two feet away from someone, you'd never ADS with your shotgun, you'd rather jump up and try to hip fire and kill them that way. So you can tell yourself, oh, I'm probably too close if you have the combat shotgun and if you're not comfortable with ADSing your shots. Obviously, you shouldn't always ADS with the combat, but it definitely helps, and there will also be times where it's impossible to not be in your opponent's face. Sometimes your opponent will jump on top of you, or you'll get a little too excited and position yourself too close. But just remember to effectively use the combat shotgun spread, be more passive, and go for medium range peaks and shots rather than being in your opponent's face. The second big positive of the combat shotgun is its fast fire rate. The combat has a 1.85 fire rate, while the tack has a 1.5 fire rate, and those values are just the number of times it can shoot per second. To use this to your advantage, try and get in as many quick shots as you can. Don't play with a combat like you would with a single fire pump, where you'd shoot and then you'd wait 3 seconds before you can shoot again. If you can land 2 or 3 shots on someone by the time they build, go for it and hold down your fire button like a maniac. 
The more you shoot, the more likely you'll hit someone and do more damage. When you used to have a pump, you take a shot and then immediately build, so by the time you're done building, you could finally shoot again. With the combat, try and fit in as many shots as you can before you have to build, definitely more than one. It could be two or three or four shots by the time you need to build, but make sure that you're utilizing its crazy fast fire rate to one-up your opponents. The third thing that the combat does better than attack is reloading during a fight. They have the same reload speeds, but the combat actually reloads two shells for every one shell the attack does. This is a small benefit, but it actually comes in handy during fights, especially since you're going to be shooting a lot of rounds with the combat because of how fast the fire rate is. With pros and positives though, of course, comes cons and negatives. The spread on the combat shotgun makes it good for range, but as a shotgun, it's really bad from up close. The fact that you can't one-shot people with it and that its spread is so small makes it miserable to use up close, which is where you usually use a shotgun. If someone is spraying you with a P90 or a drum gun and they get into your 1x1, you're dead meat. They'll just spray you to death. Since there's no opportunity to one-shot them in the mouth and L-dance on them like you used to be able to do with the pump, you're dead. You also can't one-shot people with a headshot from the TAC, but the TAC can do a maximum damage of 158, which is 20 more than the gold variant of the combat can do. Secondly, even though the combat is very useful from mid-range, which is where I advise you guys to use it, you're probably better off just spraying a drum gun from that distance instead. The small spread also means that you have to be incredibly accurate with the combat or you'll miss all your pellets. If it had a bigger spread and your shots were slightly off, at least one or two pellets could hit someone to do 20 or 30 damage. But the spread on it is literally smaller than a character model's head from more than a block or two away. So if you miss your shot, you're going to do zero damage. Not 30, not 20, or not even 10 damage. Zero. This means if your aim isn't that good, you should either use the tack or go and grind creative courses and aim trainers to improve your aim. You can see in a ton of these clips, I just completely whiff and miss every single pellet. I think I have decent aim, but even a lot of the time I miss too. The third negative is that since it does so little damage compared to what the pump used to be able to do and what the tack does now, all your fights will be drawn out and take forever to end. The problem with taking forever to kill someone and drawn out fights is that you're more likely to get third partied because other people have more time to come and try and kill you. Since the combat shotgun strength is mid range, it's going to take forever to kill people and you're more likely to get third partied. If you've been constantly getting third party this season, maybe look at which shotgun you're using and decide to use the TAC instead of the combat. Now let's talk about what makes the TAC shotgun better or worse than the combat and how you should play around the TAC. I mentioned this before, but the biggest strength of the TAC compared to the combat is its bigger spread. The TAC is much more forgiving when you're up close to someone and you partially miss a shot. A bigger spread means that more pellets will hit even if you don't line up your shot correctly. The TAC also lets you play like a maniac like you used to be able to do with the pump. With a combat shotgun, you should be cautious when W keying or when someone is in your face. Up in people's faces is exactly the position where the tack shines and how you should use it. It does more damage with a headshot than the combat up close too, and paired with the bigger spread means you can play like an absolute maniac and not get punished. If you've noticed in these clips, with the combat shotgun, I did my best to stay a block or two away from all my opponents and use the combat where it's best, which is the mid range. With attack, I'm literally heavy sniping into people's builds, I'm building over them and then dropping on their heads. When I know and I hear someone with a combat shotgun and I have attack, I know to play more aggressive and to do my best to get as close as possible so it's easier for me to do more damage and harder for them to hit me because their shots with the combat are much harder to hit with a small spread. The last major positive of the TAC that makes it much better for those really close range box fighting scenarios is that the TAC shotgun pulls out and shoots faster than the combat shotgun by an average of 13 milliseconds. This means when you have someone in a box in front of you and you replace their wall, you can edit and get the first shot off 13 milliseconds quicker with a TAC than with a combat shotgun. 13 milliseconds may sound like not a lot of time to actually notice anything, but it could be the difference between you quickly shooting, then building to protect yourself, or your opponent getting a shot back off on you and killing you. What the tack doesn't do well though is obviously damage from range. The tack seriously sucks from anywhere that's not really up close, and even then it can still hit like a wet noodle sometimes. The other cons for the tack are just things that I mentioned before that the combat does better, like fire rate and reload time. If you guys want my personal recommendation for what to use, the TAC is better than the combat. It suits most people's playstyles better because people use shotguns up close and during build fights and not as like a mid-range poke weapon. The TAC spread is bigger and easier to hit shots with and it's also capable of doing more max damage to the head. My real recommendation though, and I'm not kidding, is using the drum gun. A drum gun actually has better DPS, which is damage per second, than both the combat and the TAC shotgun. 
If you have a TAC or a combat shotgun and a guy's in front of you, the drum gun is so damn overpowered right now because by the time you hit a solid shotgun shot for like 80 damage, the drum gun has already fired like 20 bullets and hit you with a minimum of like 5 of them for over 100 damage. If you can't decide whether to use a TAC or a combat, just go with another drum gun on top of the one that you already have. Overall, the TAC in my opinion is better than the combat, but the drum gun is the best gun in the game, so use that. If this video helped you guys out, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. We're finally less than 500 supporters away from the 10k mark, so we can start the Ducky12 mini giveaway. Get everyone you know to use my code, get your grandma or your pet goldfish, whoever it may be, use code Jarian, it helps out a ton. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.